Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review the art house film Horsehead, where dreams become reality. Written and directed by Romain Basso, starring Lily Fleur, Pinot, and Catriona McCall. Horsehead is about a woman studying lucid dreams who returns home after the death of her grandmother. Over time, her dreams begin to bleed into reality. In case you don't know, lucid dreams are dreams which you can control. When you realize you're in a dream, and you can manipulate your surroundings. So what did we like? I wanna kick it off with the visuals in this movie because this was an absolutely gorgeous film. Everything cinematography wise was done amazingly. I also really enjoyed the use of macro shots which is when you've got really close up shots which kind of made you feel a little disoriented which was their purpose and I thought it was done fantastically. They used a lot of backlighting which was nice because in the dream world you're creating this dark ominous supernatural feeling that isn't reality especially when they're showcasing the door and what's behind the walls. They use red lighting with red costumes. It's really creepy and it looks beautiful. This style of lighting is used in a lot of North American films like the others when they're trying to show that there's something beyond what's in the room. You can tell the Romain had some Italian influence because there was definitely a lot of Dario Argento style colors. He even casted Catriona McCall who was known for Lucio Fulci films like The Beyond and City of the Living Dead and I thought that was a great throwback. I really enjoyed the costume and makeup design. The costume design was great particularly because during the dream sequences and the reality sequences they had clothing from different periods and it made it a lot easier to distinguish when we were in each world. We get this great shot of this horse head peeking through these curtains and we just see this like skeleton looking horse head and this like just smoke just comes out of its nostrils and it, I thought it was shot very well and it was like really detailed. My favorite part about the makeup was in one of Jessica's dream sequences she was crucified and she had just this realistic blood dripping down her arms and from her legs and it just looked incredible. I really enjoyed the use of symbolism and the deeper meaning in this film. I liked that they tied in information about what symbolisms are in dreams and religious aspects. Plus they threw in almost like a native knowledge there by having the wolf being the guiding spirit. Jessica, who was on this journey to find something, wearing the red cloak, following the wolf, it was almost as if she was Red Riding Hood going to grandmother's house. The use of the horse head and it was stated very blatantly in the movie that the horse itself could be the harbinger of death or it could be almost like a mother figure to an extent depending on how you look at it and both of those aspects kind of play out throughout the rest of the film. I thought the acting in this film was great from probably the entire cast. I love George's character. I thought the father or stepfather was fantastic. And I felt our lead Jessica, played by Lily Fleur.0, was absolutely incredible. Uh, she came off so natural, and I thought her character was developed in such a way that I felt real concern for her when she went between the reality sequences through the dream sequences. So what didn't we like? Well, I love most of the acting in this film. I think that they underuse Catriona McCall while she was a primary point of the story. I didn't care for her character. I felt the pacing of this film could have used some work. We had some great introductory scenes and some great final scenes, but throughout the middle of the film, I felt like it was a bit too of the same thing over and over again, and I kind of lost track of what was going on. I got bored. It tried to let us kind of learn things for a bit, and I think that's where everybody kind of stopped really getting what the movie was about. And then we finally understood it about halfway through the film, and that's when we were fully engaged for the rest of it. And I usually don't like when they say, hey, this is what the movie's about, but this is one of those movies where you kind of need a little more guidance, especially towards the beginning of the film. It's the genre that is hard to get the explanation in there, because it is an avant-garde film. The explanation and exposition was there in this film, it was just too hidden that the average person can't really pick it out. For people that like this art house style of film, I think they'll really enjoy it. There's a lot of symbolism, and that's something that I necessarily didn't like because I, I sometimes don't pick up on that so I kind of I miss a lot of the details and I get kind of lost. Being that it's an art house film, the editing style was a lot different than we're used to. There was a lot of distracting imagery within quick cuts throughout the film that you couldn't quite pick up on everything. It looked nice, but I couldn't tell you what it meant. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. If you like art films, this is a beautiful film. It is shot amazingly, 
and the story and the meaning is just well delivered. The costume and makeup was spectacular, the acting was good. Overall, I enjoyed the story. Not everyone's gonna get it and not everyone's gonna wanna see it, but it's still a great film. So that being said, I'm gonna give this four creepy addicts out of five. Horsehead is like Starry Eyes meets Requiem for a Dream. It's got stellar visuals, but it's super artistic, so it might not be for everybody. I thought the cinematography was fantastic, the lighting was phenomenal, and the acting was supernatural. The story the story was really cool, but I feel that there are too many lulls in it that I don't think your average moviegoer is going to really enjoy. So for that reason, I'm going to give this three and a half bottles of ether out of five. I missed a lot of the symbolism and I had a hard time keeping track of what was actually going on. I thought the movie was very well produced. I thought the costume and makeup design were amazing and I especially loved the horse. I thought they did a great job on designing the way, the way he looked and the way he felt and this creepiness that he actually added to the entire film. So with all that said, I'm going to have to give this movie two and a half crazy grandma drawings out of five. As always, thank you for watching, like this video, and if you're interested in checking out the film, it comes out on May 5th from Black Fawn Distribution. I have a link to where you can pick it up in the description below, and it comes out on a really cool two disc Blu-ray, the first from Black Fawn. And if this is your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay updated with everything we're doing here on Bloodbath and Beyond.